For a wrap of uh, today's court proceedings at the Oscar Pistorius trial, we are now joined by our reporter Patricia Vesahi, who is outside the North Gauteng High Court. Patricia, very good afternoon to you. Of course, the defense rests its case primarily. What does this mean? Please take us through the highlights of today's trial. Well, of course, uh, today, extensive uh, focus on the Paralympian's ability to move, walk, and perhaps run on his uh, stumps. Uh, that, uh, as uh, his sports uh, doctor, Professor Wayne Derman, concluded his testimony under cross-examination, conceding to the state prosecutor, Advocate Harry Nell, that the Paralympian indeed had the option to flee and perhaps even walk out of his bedroom on the morning of Valentine's Day when he shot and killed uh, Reva Stienkamp. That was perhaps one of the aspects that dominated today's uh, court uh, case. And of course, that followed by the standoff uh, between uh, the two advocates, that being the prosecutor and the Paralympians defense advocate, Advocate Barry Rue, over whether the defense has permission to consult with the state psychiatrist, Dr. Uh, Korta. Of course, uh, Judge uh, Togozile Masipa did not uh, uh, give uh, the defense permission mission she said they have they are not permitted to consult with uh, the state psychiatrist and uh one another aspect that, uh, of course, we thought would dominate is the video that is much talked about at the moment. That video that has been broadcast by an international broadcaster showing uh, the Paralympian reliving and reenacting uh, the events leading up to the shooting and thereafter on the morning of Valentine's Day. But of course, and um, against our anticipation, it did not happen. But let's talk more about uh, some aspects of today's court proceedings and I am joined by the president of the Law Society of the North and that is Dr. Llewellyn Kalouis right here next to me. Uh, good afternoon doctor. Very good afternoon to you too. Um, of course today uh, seeing uh, Dr. Derman contradicting his earlier testimony. Well obviously that was the point of contention. Uh, Harry Nell had the opportunity to cross-examine uh, he did so, he did so successfully in my mind. Uh, he got precisely uh, from the cross examiner what he intended to, to prove and uh, there was no need for him to introduce the video material that we were speculating about this morning. Obviously no need to flock a dead horse, so to speak. And again, it seems as his credibility came under immense scrutiny once again. Oh, well, e exactly that. Uh, after the cross-examination, my, uh, my personal opinion was that the, his credibility was out of the door, uh, on par with that of Dixon and uh, all the others. Um, so at this stage, I would, have been, I would be some, somewhat concerned if I were in the position of the defense. Well, we all anticipated uh, that uh, this uh, video that we saw uh, yesterday dominating headlines uh, to be the main focus in today's uh, court proceedings, but that did not happen. Like I said, no need to flock a dead horse. If there, it was a point of contention, in other words, if uh, Professor Dermot uh, denied the fact as submitted by uh, Harry Nell in cross-examination towards him, then in that case, I would have assumed safely that uh, Harry Nell will then introduce the video material to confront him with, the, with, the, with that in order to contradict his version. But the moment uh, Derman uh, actually acceded to it, there was no need further to elaborate on it. Is it normal though to take a different route instead of taking the anticipated route of actually, you know, uh, bringing this video um, you know, as, as being the focus of the court proceedings. There's many ways to, to many ways to kill a cat, so to speak. Um, that is what one me method to use. You remember there was the incident with the zombie shooting at some stage where there was also video material at stake. And uh, in, in that uh, way, uh, Harry Nell uh, had a, a different approach to get it introduced into evidence. And uh, I would have been uh, mindful of the fact that he would probably have tried the same persuasive manner in order to get uh, the necessary result today. But it was wasn't necessary. Then the legal gymnastics between Advocate Rue and Advocate Now. What do you make of that about whether the defense has the right to consult with Dr. Kotze or not? Once again, one must be very careful to become too technical. Remember, you get two types of, of witnesses. You get state witnesses and you get defense witnesses. All people out there is potential state witnesses until such time as the state closes its case, after which they become potential defense witnesses. When the state closed its case, they placed all their remaining witnesses at the disposal of the defense. So from a strictly legal point of view, 
Barry Ruiz quite within his parameters to ask the court to give permission to actually consult with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kotsa. And of course, uh, that uh, being uh, the legal expert here at the Oscar Pistorius murder trial, that being Dr. Llewellyn Kalouis, we will be back tomorrow and we will find out whether the defense will arrest its case or not. And that question still hangs in the balance on whether, uh, you know, the state would also perhaps take another route and reopen its case. Thank you so much. And we do apologize for the break in transmission there. That was SABC reporter Patricia Visaki with a legal expert, Dr. Llewellyn Kerr Lewis, live to us from the North Gauteng High Court, giving us a wrap of today's court proceedings.